Hello friends, it's been a while. So in case you have forgotten, I make videos on sustainability. I make some videos on my IBS. I make some videos on my lifestyle and just other little bits and bobs. And today is one of those videos about those bits and bobs. I am getting my tonsils removed. <laughs> So here we are, sunglasses on because we have a headache and on that topic, uh, yeah, I have to get my tonsils out. These sons of a guns have been bothering me for so long and by bothering, I mean that they get inflamed, I get tonsil stones and I'm super self-conscious of them and I'm not, I, it's not a fun time. They give me earaches. If I'm sick, they get so sore. Like I just, I want them out of my life. Cut out toxic tonsils in your life 2021. <laughs> So the unfortunate thing that I had no idea uh, was a thing about tonsil removal is that you can't take any type of blood thinner medication. So uh, Advil, Aleve, everything but Tylenol basically. I can take Tylenol, acetaminophen is fine. Tylenol unfortunately doesn't work for my headaches, only Advil does and sometimes Aleve. And yeah, I can't take that. So the problem that has arisen in the past few days is as I reach this very stressful event of a surgery tomorrow, um, I have had headaches and have not been able to curb them. And the one thing that's been kind of helping is the Sage Headache Roller. I'm not really one for herbal remedies, but I think it's like the coolness of it. It's so intense that it feels like it distracts me from the pain of the headache. And so that's been helpful. Nothing else has helped. <laughs> Hot packs don't help, ice packs don't help. So that's why I'm wearing sunglasses right now because this is the third day in a row that I've been, I feel like it's sitting in here and it's just waiting. It's just waiting for the worst opportunity to come out, which is literally any minute now. All, all the opportunities are bad opportunities. So my partner and I got into the city Saturday, yesterday, and today, this morning, I had to get a rapid COVID test. <laughs> I have had a COVID test once before. I got it when restrictions finally had opened and I was about to see my family for the first time. So I got the test to make sure that I hadn't gotten COVID. Nobody had been vaccinated, vaccines weren't a thing at this point. So I had gotten that test and that test felt like it tickled, like made my eyes kind of water. It kind of tickled a little bit, it wasn't painful, it was fine. Fast forward to today. The lady asked, have you ever done this before? And I said, no, because I haven't had a rapid COVID test. So the first thing, she tells me is that it's going to be excruciating pain for 10 seconds. <laughs> she said that right out. That's a scary thing to hear. But now looking back, I'm very glad that she said that to me because I was prepared for what was coming. And basically it's the same kind of test. It goes up the nose and it tickles, but instead of tickling, holy smokes, it felt like, the other one felt like it went like up to here. I don't know if you can see my side profile, but this one felt like it reached like the back of my eyeballs and like touched my brain. <laughs> it was deep in my face. <laughs> Nonetheless, I survived. It was fine. I made it out. And now I am here in the house again. I'm not allowed to go anywhere or socialize or do errands or do anything. I am supposed to stay inside until my surgery, which is tomorrow. So after midnight tonight, I'm not allowed to eat food and then I'm allowed to only have liquids until between midnight and 8 a.m. the next morning and so that's gonna suck because I'm a kind of person who has to eat something or else I feel ugh, I don't feel good I feel like super nauseous and weak so that's not gonna be a fun time because my surgery is not until like noon <laughs> but that's okay so I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk to you about some of the food that I did bring for myself if any of my IBS friend video people are watching this just a heads up I'm not sure that this is all IBS friendly. I've literally just bought it to get through this surgery, knowing that some of this stuff's probably gonna make me bloat or whatever, but I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna accept it because <laughs> you have to like care for yourself in, in whatever way is mean manageable in that moment. So I'm gonna talk to you about the food that I brought. I'm gonna talk to you about some of the comfort items that I brought for myself so that I'm cozy and as comfortable as possible afterwards. And then we're gonna make some jello. <laughs> Number one on the docket for taking care of myself is pistachio pudding. <laughs> I also have chocolate pudding. I also have vanilla pudding. And then we have two lime jellos. <laughs> I also have a couple of soups, apple sauce. I have Annie's gluten-free mac and cheese. I feel like this might be a little bit salty, but I can always like water it down or something. Apple juice, a couple of Gatorades. And then on top of that, I have yogurt and frozen yogurt just for like something icy and cold. Oh, it's just gonna suck. I'm so not looking forward to this event. I don't wanna do this, but I have to do it because oh, it's gonna pay off in the long run. It's gonna be fine. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take you with me 
to show you some of the other what am I doing with my nose right now? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take you with me to show you some of the other things that I bought myself that are gonna help me survive this. So one of the things that I bought is this breakfast tray which I've actually wanted for a long time anyways it like it folds up underneath and it's one of those things that you can bring to the bed and you can eat your breakfast on there I was actually just using it for my camera like it's it's gonna come in handy and it tucks away very nicely behind furniture so I'm very happy about that what else do I have here I also have this I mentioned the sage peppermint halo headache roller and I've just been using it in case I have a headache and it's so nice but there's I don't know if you can see how little there is in there there's like a few drops <laughs> so we're rationing here <laughs> so i brought my pillow which is like my comfy cozy squishy pillow i downloaded a text to voice app it's called text to speech because i'm i don't think i'll be able to talk for a while i have my blue light glasses so that i can watch movies i have my big slippers they're currently being used at the moment i also have a bunch of soft clothing like this soft scarf that also doubles as a blanket and i have a lounging type of pajama sweater that I've had since I went to New York in 2011. So it's like a pajama top. I have long johns for warmth. Big socks. I got these in Ukraine and they're so soft and they're, they're just, oh, they're like a big, thick, cozy, warm sock. How can you not be cozy when you're wearing this? This one you'll get a kick out of. <laughs> I also bought this. <laughs> So that if I need a hand and I can't, you know, turn my volume up high enough on my text to voice app, I can just ring my little bell, which I also got in Ukraine. <laughs> I have a heating pad that I brought because I get cold so fast and I want to be cozy AF. And I also brought ice packs because I heard that you'll want them. I also have my laptop and I brought a Kindle and I'm gonna read some books if I feel like it or if I don't feel like it, that's cool too. I can do what I want because I'm gonna be not well. <laughs> anyway, that is my stuff. That is all the things that I have. So hopefully I'll be cozy even though I'm uncomfortable. I also forgot to mention that I, um, I brought Metamucil because apparently T3s is what they give you after the surgery and those apparently cause me to feel bad and that's a problem for me, so we're not gonna be dealing with that, no thank you. I can only have one cup, one to two cups of fluid. So that's um, either water or apple juice for me. It could be tea or coffee, but I didn't want that. So I'm gonna have one cup of water and one cup of apple juice, and that's gonna be my breakfast. <laughs> Because I think if I have sort of a disturbed 
I'm going to be doing is when I come home from the hospital, I want to be wearing the same clothes that I was wearing to the hospital. I want to take those off and then put on fresh clothes before I go into bed and do whatever the heck I'm going to be doing afterwards. So I have a little outfit set out for myself already. I have my cozy sweater, I have my long john stop, and I have Lululemon bottoms because these are super cozy leggings. And then I have some fresh socks. So I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to wear, well, minus the slippers, I'm going to be wearing these other long socks. And then then these are long john pants and then I have a flannel uh, button up. I feel like it's easier for me to take things off if I just have to unbutton them rather than pull them over my head. I don't know if that's going to be an issue or not. Maybe I'm overthinking all of this, but it's just going to make it one step easier. So that's the outfit of the day. I'm not really ready, but I don't really have another choice. <laughs> so here we are. And accessory of the day, vomit bucket and a backpack with a heat pad in it and a water bottle just in case I need that too. <laughs> the next time that I come back here, I will not have tonsils. Yeehaw! Ooh. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Turn around. <laughs> It's actually Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> I'm obviously able to speak a little bit, but it doesn't feel very nice. So I'm going to be using my text-to-speech app and explain everything that's happened. So everybody, please welcome back. Let's start at the beginning, but first frozen yogurt. I checked in at front desk and then they switched my mask for a fresh one. My partner was turned away here because of their COVID policy. I got admitted and got my bracelets put on, and then waited to get into the day surgery unit. I was so hungry at this point. I'm so hungry. And I course there was this snack machine right in front of me that kept whispering my name. Finally they took me in and they measured my weight and height. Then they brought me into a room and was given some bags for my belongings. This one was for clothing. This one for shoes. I also got these little booties to wear and a hair net and of course a very sexy hospital gown. Then I was hooked up to an IV. They put it in my wrist it was a bit painful usually it's in my hand. While they were hooking me up they asked me questions about myself. Like if I had any piercings, dental work, fainting spells, allergies etc. I signed the consent form, and then I waited and watched some YouTube for like 2 hours. I watched traditional Tibet dancing and a Chinese peacock dance. I know, an odd choice, but it kept my brain very preoccupied. Lots of different healthcare workers came to talk to me while I was waiting. The anesthesiologist talked to me. The nurse that was going to be in the operating room talked to me. Two other healthcare workers talked to me. The surgeon talked to me. They all made sure they had the right person and asked my birthday and what I was in for and my allergies. They all leaned about my mangoes and allergy. Leaned about, they all leaned about, leaned about my, leaned about my man. They all learned about my mangoes and cashew allergy which I made a video about if you also want to learn. On the consent form there was a point about how they will do extended or alternative procedures and I asked the surgeon what that was about. It's just in case they noticed a growth or lay in back there, and it would be in my best interest to remove it or take a sample. When I asked the surgeon about this I also asked if they could make me come out singing like Celine Dion and he did not think that was funny. I also asked for different medicine than T3s because my family has a history of getting nauseated with T3s. And I was told that I would get nauseated from the tonsil surgery. And that I would be nauseated from the anesthesia because women are more sensitive to it. And that I would be nauseated from the medicine no matter which one I took. But guess who never really got nauseated? Winner winner chicken dinner. Finally they wheeled me into the operating room and threw a heated blanket on me. And I said something about how it was nice. 
And someone said, yeah that's about the only nice thing about this. They weren't very positive people but at least they were honest. Then they gave a second heated blanket, and I said, oh oh luxury. And one of the nurses said we'll put that on your bill. And we all said ha 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 ha. And then a nice anesthesiologist put a very soft and squishy oxygen mask on and bam the next thing I know is that I woke up in recovery. Then the nurses scooted me into a different room to recover and I wanted to sleep so badly. But there were so many noises like alarms and this groaning woman who was so loud. At this point it was maybe 4.30. I was originally supposed to be picked up at 3.30. And meanwhile I'm still laying in bed hooked up to my IV and snoozing away. Then it was 5pm and I still hadn't had food since the night before. So they gave me a popsicle. And they tried to get me to sit up and walk around but I only got as far as sitting up before everything got super wonky and I had to lay down again. They tried to give me jello and I got queasy so the nurse gave me a couple of shots of something in my IV which really helped. And she gave me a pain pill. Finally I started to feel better by around 7.30. I got dressed and my partner picked me up and we went to the nearest pharmacy to get my prescription pain medicine. But that was going to be a two hour wait so we had to drive to a different one. By the time we got home and sorted out a schedule for my prescription and had everything set up for the night, it was after 9 I think. It felt so good to change into fresh pajamas and fresh socks and snuggle into bed with a heat pack and just pass out. Through the night my partner set himself an alarm to wake me up every 4 hours to take my pain medicine. He is an angel. What is currently working for me is crushing the medicine. Dissolving it in a bit of water, and then pouring a bit of chill boost in the cup. Goes down super easy and leaves less of a bad taste. But then I had the chance to read my prescription paperwork and it says you shouldn't crush opioids. So we are going to call the doctor and double check, since they crushed it for me at the hospital. I have to change my battery. Do you hear that? Time for medicine. Sigh. So that's where we are at. I had some pudding and jello for breakfast. Having some frozen yogurt and sleeping a lot. Like a lot a lot. Here are some things I discovered. My nose was so itchy after I woke up from surgery and I don't know why. The pain is actually not that bad. One of the nurses said, and I quote, This is going to be the worst sore throat of your life and it definitely isn't. It's not fun and it is sore to swallow but in between swallowing, I really don't feel it at all. When I swallow it just feels like something is at the back of my throat. Cold liquids are helpful. I thought I would have no voice for a long time but I was surprised I could talk afterwards. I'd rather not talk though because I sound like this. <laughs> Weirdly enough the left and right sides of my tongue are still numb. And I think they had to open my mouth up pretty wide because when I woke up from surgery the corners of my mouth were cracked. So I am using my lip sleeping mask has been really nice because it's thick and keeps it from hurting or drying out. I haven't looked at the back of my mouth and I'm not sure I want to look. Apparently when the scab comes off you swallow it and I don't even want to think about that. Yuck. Ignorance is bliss. What I didn't bring that I wish I did was a small humidifier. You really want to keep your mouth moist. That's kind of it for today. I'll check in again each day and talk about any differences I notice. Well, today's a different day. <laughs> I feel more uncomfortable. 
Oh, last night I had to put ice packs on. I keep waking up and replacing ice packs. You can see me. I don't know if you can see or not. But I'm a lot more swollen in here than I was before. <laughs> um, so that's fun. I'm gonna probably eat a little bit of breakfast or something. Something cold. So far, not my favorite day. <laughs> Another thing I almost forgot to mention is actually noticed that I keep getting earaches, which they said could happen with some people. And it's a pretty common after effect of tonsil surgery. Like last night, especially I was getting earaches. Today, I think I'm just gonna be icing all the way home to Brandon. <laughs> this is probably the most boring video I'll ever make. But maybe the most important, the one that people need. All those people out there putting up the tonsils now. Okay, so I am definitely done with talking for the day. I am going to try some nice, lukewarm chicken soup and see how that goes. I think we should leave as soon as I take the medication so that I can pass out on the way home. Yeah. because it's been a couple of days. Time flies when you're having so much fun. So I've been humidifying, which I highly recommend. It's helping to keep my environment super moist and it helps breathing and it helps everything from drying out, which is really positive. So the medicine I was taking was tramadol and it makes me super wonky and I don't really remember what I've told you and what I haven't told you because I'm like in a totally different, I'm on a different planet right now. <laughs> And I guess because it's a sedative, it makes all of my muscles super relaxed. So my jaw will just like fall open every time I sleep, guaranteed. Which is really weird for me, and that's not what I want because I'm trying to keep everything closed so I can stay moist. And I don't want it to dry out, so that's been annoying. The problem with these pills is that they weren't able to keep up with the pain. So my dad actually came into the city and just took me to a walk-in just now. And the guy looked at my mouth and he says he thinks I have an infection. So he gave me an antibiotic and he gave me two threes, which are a different type of pain relief. So I'm gonna try those in a couple of hours once my current medication wears off. And I'm hoping for a bit more pain relief because it's really, it's getting kind of bad. And it's very difficult to eat and swallow. Yesterday I couldn't talk at all. Today I can at least talk like this. I know it's, it's awkward, but at least it's something. I've been able to brush my teeth for a few days now. Flossing, I use like these little picks because putting my fingers in my mouth is really tricky and it feels like it's manipulating my muscles around my mouth too much. And then for brushing, I kind of just brush the fronts of my teeth, which are fine. And then the backs are really only like from here to here because everything past that feels like it's too close to the surgery site. Excuse me, I have to spit. <laughs> So that's another thing um, that I've, I've been experiencing the past few days, especially. Like my saliva protection is through the roof, and it's not like regular thin saliva, it's like thick, heavy duty, gorilla glue saliva. And I think it's just trying to make a protective layer to protect my mouth, but it's really annoying. Sorry if that was too TMI. Salt water kind of helps to get rid of it, but I don't want to take it too much because I don't want to over inflame everything instead of healing it. Oh, last night I remembered that I owned a tongue scraper and that's been really good to have. I used to think that I bought it and it was an impulse purchase. And the amount of times that this tongue scraper has actually paid itself off has it's been more times than I can count. You know when you used to get like a fuzzy tongue after you were traveling or when you were sick with a cold or something. That tongue scraper freshens everything up so nicely and I'm so glad that I have it. So I'm really happy about that. Big fan, big recommend. Last night I was able to eat macaroni and cheese for the first time, which was nice. Eating is really weird. I think they must have like clamped my tongue during the surgery to keep it out of the way. <laughs> because there's like, there's two marks on the sides of my tongue. 
And my tongue is also pretty numb and kind of useless right now. And it makes eating difficult because my tongue's not working properly. I have to go spit again. I've been drinking as much fluids as I can handle, which isn't very much, but I'm doing my best because it's really important to stay hydrated and moist. And the longer I go between drinking fluids, the harder it is to swallow the next time. So I'm really trying to stay on top of all that. I've been taking ice packs to bed with me whenever I'm laying down and I just rest them like here and here where it's irritated the most. I've also been putting ozonol on the corners of my mouth and now they're healing really well so that's helped a lot. Here's a weird one that's been happening. If I exhale too fast, if I laugh too much, if I burp, if I blow my nose, it makes the palate at the back of my throat do a weird like balloon suction thing. It's not painful, it just kind of catches me by surprise and it's probably going to go away once everything settles down but I think it's just happening because it's irritated and inflamed. I guess in general I've been pretty bummed about the speed of recovery, it's been very slow. I can't even like think straight so I'm probably just going to go to sleep now so I'll catch it with you another time. said the other day was the worst day. Ha 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 ha. Yesterday I switched out the pills I was taking for T3s and initially they seemed to be doing a much better job. I literally took one and felt major pain relief. But it must have been pulling my leg because last night was the absolute worst. Very intense sharp pains and weak. I don't know if the T3s aren't as potent or if the infection got worse overnight. Or if it's just day 6 of the stab coming off, but it's intense. I don't want to do anything or eat anything or drink anything. Which is a shame because my stomach really wants the mac and cheese I made myself two days ago but there's no way I can handle the noodles. I was alone until now because my partner had to go back to work on Wednesday. But turns out my partner actually got the day off and he just got here and I am so grateful because it sucks to be alone when you are in a lot of pain. I think my parents are going to come in around lunch time too. Which is great because now everyone can find out how bad I smell. I just showed yesterday but I think my body is just oozing out sweat from every pore. And also my breath. You guys, please leave a comment down below if you are a witch and know a spell to get this demon out of my mouth. It is so bad. This is probably what a crow's breath smells like after it picks at a roadkill raccoon all day. I hate it. I think every tonsil stone I ever had must have laid a curse on me when the mothership tonsils were removed. I'm also just going to say it. I haven't had a number two since Monday, which is pretty concerning because I have been taking fibber for four days straight now and someone down there isn't getting the memo. The first two days I was able to handle metamucil but yesterday and today the pain has been too much to swallow a sugary orange drink mix. So I switched to Benefiba. I mix it up with a little bit of water and then add it to some chilled boost which has been much more soothing on my throat than water. It has no taste so I hope it starts to wake up whoever is sleeping down there. I'm not pregnant I mean to say that the train has stalled in the tunnel and the conductor is oblivious because they are listening to the 10 minute version of all too well on repeat or something. Let's do a grocery haul with what my partner bought me from the store. Thank God for these. Hallelujah. Holy moly, okay. So I didn't check in for a little while afterwards um, because I ended up actually not feeling super good. What's funny about this is I watched some other tonsillectomy videos around this time and they all actually cut off around the same time mark because the pain gets so intense and you get kind of depressed, like you're just kind of sick of it already. I'm just gonna fill you in on what I didn't film and then we'll go from there, so sorry about that. Sunday, talking was really bad. It didn't matter if the pills were crushed or not, everything was painful. Insane ear pain when I would swallow. It felt like 
it felt like knives or pencils were being pushed down my ears into like my neck i guess there's a lot of nerve connection there um, but i didn't know that and that was crazy to experience a lot of random sharp pains it would alternate on which side of the mouth it was coming from and i think that was possibly the scab coming off but basically it made me cry <laughs> it was so bad my poor partner his role was to wake me up through the night every four hours as needed to give me my medication and then um you know he'd come into the room and it was like he may as well have been the grim reaper like i hated taking my medication even though i knew it would help me feel better and so this is when i started to watch other people getting their tonsils removed and other vlogs on youtube and stuff and there was this other girl who was getting the exact same pains as me and she set herself an alarm every two hours to remind her to drink water even if it was just a sip and she found that it reduced the pain quite a lot so I decided to try it. I set an alarm for 45 minutes and that was perfect for me. Um, reduced the pain quite a bit. Didn't eradicate it, but it reduced it a lot and that was helpful. On this day, I also could only handle boost with ice water. I could not handle water. So by the end of the day, I was very dehydrated. That was not good. And we had just bought all those popsicles, three boxes of popsicles. And I was eating a ton on Saturday, like a ton. And some of them were on Sunday as well, but after that, the sugar started to sting my throat so bad and I couldn't eat anything with sugar. So since then, I haven't had any popsicles. That was actually why I never even touched the Gatorades too, but um, now, now we have three boxes of popsicles that we're gonna have to go through in Canadian winter, so that's gonna be fun. <laughs> on Monday, I magically started to feel a lot better. I don't know if it was because I had set that 45 minute alarm, so it was easier for me to kind of swallow and function. I'm not too sure. Voice came back a little bit, but it was still painful, but I started feeling a lot more like myself. I also got my partner to purchase me aloe water, so it's just aloe drink. It, it tastes like um, white grape juice. It's quite nice, and I didn't find the sugar from that stung my throat. It actually cooled it and was kind of nice and at least something that I could drink so that was nice. Other people I noticed said that sugar-free gum helped for them around this time and I didn't find that it helped at all. It didn't, it didn't make it worse, it just didn't do anything so I didn't take it. By Tuesday I definitely had more energy, I felt a lot more like myself and my voice was better but still raspy even today. Today is Wednesday and it's, you can hear it, it doesn't quite sound what my voice usually sounds like so we're still working on it, still a little bit painful um, but it's not that bad. I've definitely lost weight which is unusual for me, I don't usually fluctuate in weight but at the same time I haven't been eating for like a week properly so so that explains that. I still can't really eat hard foods yet, it's still too soon for that, but I'm healing fast, still drinking a lot of water, so every day is actually feeling like an improvement. I've actually started slowing down my medication because of that. I, as of yesterday, I finally was not constipated anymore. <laughs> so I would highly suggest that you take laxatives every single day if you're taking any kind of medicine that has codeine in it. My sleep schedule is out of whack now. I slept 11 hours last night and I still get tired in the middle of the day. So I'm, I mean, I'm still healing. I'm still like repairing everything inside of my body so it's understandable what has absolutely been a lifesaver has been the ice packs absolutely i needed them especially after i took my medication i needed them instantly or else the pain was so bad and so that was really helpful laxatives benefiber is really good because you can put it into anything you can put it into liquids you can put it into food it's got no taste you can't there's no texture it's really handy lots of pillows so you can prop yourself up making sure you have a lot of cold drinks and cold foods that text to speech app was super helpful i used that little bell so many times not everybody's gonna have a little bell to use but it was easier to have that than to text someone or to have to write something Thing. That foldable breakfast tray that I bought from Canadian Tire was like the best thing. It was the perfect height to eat off of, it was the perfect height to work off of from bed, and it was great. I'll try to find it on the website and link it down below for you. I don't know if a link will be there or if it will expire, so I'll try my best. If it's there, it's there, and if it's not, then it's not. So yeah, that's been my experience. Not a very fun time. Whoever told me that it was only like a day or two um, is super wrong. <laughs> Yeah, it um, was not what I expected. <laughs>
so super sorry this video is supposed to be like 15 minutes and it's like way longer than i thought it was gonna be because i had no idea that i was gonna go through any of this it's gonna pay off in the long run because now i will not have tonsillitis ever again <laughs> speaking of the long run so there's a lot of changes happening in my life very big changes within the next four to five weeks and it's spooking me a little bit <laughs> So to face all of those changes, I'm gonna need to take a social media break and just step back for a little bit, um, just so that I don't get crazy and so that I can come back fresh and clear-minded with better content and not feel stressed about it. So this is my last video until the new year. I hope you have a very safe and happy holiday season and I'm gonna miss you a lot, but we will see you in 2022. Bye.